Well, good morning. We are continuing our study. Now, if you see that I'm wearing the same shirt, this is the same day. Like 30 seconds in between videos. So understand. And we didn't talk about this book. This book right here. This is a book that I purchased. It's the Essential Tozer Collection. Now, I don't know if you know, that I, but I am a very much a fan and a lover of, of reading A.W. Tozer. Love A.W. Tozer. You know, if you, if you want to read something good, and, I, and I've read, not read these books yet. I'm, I've started the first book, which is The Pursuit of God. The second book is The Pursuit of Man. The third book is The Crucified Life. Now, I have started The Pursuit of God, and it's good. It's good so far. A.W. Tozer is probably one of my favorite authors. I, I mean, I've got a few authors that I, I love. Max Licato. I love uh, uh, John Maxwell. I love A.W. Tozer. A.W. A. Tozer is an older author. But if you love to read books about uh, doctrinal stuff, Christian living stuff, A.W. Tozer is probably the best there is for that. Some people might say, well, I have, my, I have these favorite authors too. But in, in my opinion, you have, you have your own opinion, but in my opinion, A.W. Tozer is probably the best, in my opinion. Now, we didn't talk about it. I'll probably be reviewing the, the, these books as well uh, in the book reviews. I haven't done book reviews yet, but we will be getting to that. But we're going to be doing the... Excuse me, I had to have something to drink this morning. But Gideon, we've gone through chapter 6 of Judges, and I'm taking notes as we go along. Now, we talked about the whole chapter. Now, we, there, the, the Baal, the, uh, the idol of Baal was in the, in, 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 in the city. Gideon tore it down in the middle of the night. We talked about why he did that. He was afraid. All of those things. Gideon tore down. His father, who was a worshiper of Baal, instead of clamoring with the rest of the group, stood up for his son and stood up for God. That told us, that tells us, that Gideon's father had a little, has a little bit more of an understanding of who God is left in his heart. So it, it, it kind of, it, it is an encouraging thing to see. Now, we're going to go ahead and go to chapter 7. Gideon defeats the Midianites. That's what it says on my, uh, my um, Bible. And you'll see through here as we go down, this is only very, it's only, a, it's a very short chapter. Uh, probably, what does it say here? 26 verses, maybe. 25, 26 verses. But what happens in this chapter now, 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 chapter 6, we see Gideon going from being hiding food in a wine press to, to doing something that is unforeseen him to do, which is to, to take what God said, to take what God said and start to build the faith. And that, and that is something that we must do. You know, we, we view ourselves, and I've said through this study, we view ourselves as, um, as more of a, a person who, at least I, I, I do at times, I look at my failures, I look at my, my, my shortcomings, and I look at those kinds of things, and I think to myself, how and why would God want to use me? And, and, and look, Gideon was the same way. Gideon's a human being. So we, we see Gideon from this point so downtrodden. He's hiding food in a wine press. He thinks he knows by society standards he's the weakest, he's the weakest person in Israel, yet God's going to use him to deliver. So he, so he does things that we do. So he does things that we do. He says, okay, if you're, gonna, if, if you're really going to use me, Send, I've, I've got some tests for you to do. The first thing he says is stay here while I go, while I go uh, prepare something. I'll bring it back to you. 
the angel of the Lord waits. He brings back the the flatbread and the and the and the and the offering, the bull. The angel touches it. Fire comes up from the rock, consumes the whole thing. The rock's not touched. The area around the rock's not touched. Just what's on the rock itself. That lets Gideon know. Okay, this is really from God. And of course he's human and he's been living a life his whole life or at least the last seven years feeling as though that he was little or nothing okay probably his whole life but because of the society of that day that he was nothing yet God said I'm going to use, call you a mighty warrior I'm going to use you and here's my proof the angel of the Lord did the, did the sign with the with the um, offering on the rock. He believes it's God. God says, go tear down the altar of Baal. He goes and tears it down at night because he's afraid of what would happen if he did it during the day, which speaks to him being still feeling uh, worthless or still feeling weak. But yet, faith is beginning to rise. Why, why would faith begin to rise in that? Well, because, number one, he's doing what God's telling him to do. And God, God, God was faithful to do what he asked him to do, which was, stay here while I do this, make this offering. So he did, and he did the, did the, consumed it on the rock. So Gideon does what God tells him to do. He tears down the altar. So faith is beginning to rise. Faith beginning to rise in Gideon. And then he sees that his father, who was a worshiper of Baal, everyone else in the whole tribe or the whole area is clamoring to kill Gideon because he tore down their altar. Now, now it's, it's, it's in verse, it's in here in chapter 6. And what does it say? He says, uh, It says here, who has done this? And they said, jo uh, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this. The men of the city said to Joash, Bring your son so, he is, so that he may die. For, for he tore down the altar of Baal and cut down the Asher pole. They were going to kill him. If he had done it during the day, they probably would have killed him. So he did it at night. But they were going to kill him for doing that. Joash, instead of clamoring with the others stood up for God, stood up for his son. If Baal's a real God, let him fight for himself. If he's a real God. What did he say? Joash then, then, Joash said, then said to all who stood against him, Would you plead for Baal? Would you save him? Who fights for him? Will you kill by, kill by morning? If Baal is a God, let him fight for himself. If Baal is a God, let him fight for himself. Because he, see, he was a tribe, he was a tribe of Israel, he was part of the tribe of Israel, so he'd seen God fight for them. <laughs> he had seen God fight for them, you know, or heard stories. Maybe he wasn't alive during the, the time of Exodus, but he heard stories. And maybe God had done some things. We don't know. There's, there's God's, it's, it's silent in the scripture about that. But he at least heard stories of what God did, and there's proof because they're still there, and they're not, they're still not in Egypt, they're in they're in their own land, so there's proof that God fought for them. So he said, let Baal fight for himself if he's truly a god. So Gideon's faith begins to rise again. It's beginning to rise even more. And then we get down to where he had gathered all the men. He blew the horn and he'd gather all these men. And he said, if you're going to use my hand to save Israel first thing I want you to do is I want you to make the fleece wet and the ground dry. So God did that. Faith's beginning to rise. He says, please don't be angry with me, but I want to have, I, I have another test for you. Please make the ground wet and the fleece dry. So God did that. And that was the end of chapter 6. So we go on to chapter 7. Now in chapter 7, in this story, it becomes exciting of what God does through the obedience of Gideon. So we're going to go there and we're going to look at this. Chapter 7, 
verse 1. Are you taking notes? Are you taking notes? I got my pen and my paper here. But he says, he says in verse 1, chapter 7, then Jer Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, because he said Jerob Baal, because he, because he tore down the altar, or the idol of Baal. Then Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, and all the peoples who were with him got up early and set up camp at Herod Spring. There was, there was a camp of Midianites to the north, to the north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men, too many people, with you for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel glorify themselves over me, saying, Our own power saved us. So God is saying, Here is what has happened with the Israelites. The Israelites, when they, when they were getting a deliverer, when they got a deliverer, he didn't want them to say, we did this, God had nothing to do with it. God was circumventing the possibility for more sin. I want myself to get the glory, not Israel. That's basically what he's saying. He says, you have too many men, too many people with you for me to give the Midianites into your hands, lest Israel glorify themselves over me, saying, our own power saved us. And then he goes on to say in verse 3, So now call out so the people can hear. Whoever is afraid or anxious may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So he's basically saying, okay, if you're afraid, if you don't want to be here, if you're just here out of obligation, if you don't want to be here, you are, you are clear to go away. You're clear to go away. Clear to go home. You can leave. So... 22,000 among the people turned back, and 10,000 were left. So he had 32,000 people with him. 32,000 people with him. Okay? 10,000 were left. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many people. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Test them for you there. When I say to you, this one will go with you, he will go with you. Everyone about whom I say, this one will not go with you, will not go. So he brought the people down into the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, you shall set apart by himself everyone who laps the water with his tongue like dogs. Likewise, everyone who kneels down to drink, the number, the number of those who lapped putting their hands to their mouths was 300. The rest of the people knelt to, drink, knelt to drink water. So, 300 people used their hands. 10,000. 10,000. So we're talking 9,700 of the men put their face in the water and lapped like dogs. 300 of them did this. Okay? Those were the ones that God wanted. What does he say here? Where's that? The Lord said to Gideon, the, with 300 men who lapped to drink, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. All the rest of the people shall go home. So, 9,700 people. God said, you may go home. You may go back to your homes. These 300 men will fight with Gideon. Now, understand that Gideon is beginning to, to have faith rise in his heart, in his life, and he's doing, being obedient to this point. He's, he's doing what God has asked him to do. Would he have done it in chapter 6 if, beginning of chapter 6, right at the beginning? I don't think so. I don't think so. He had to have this, this time of preparation. The time of, of God moving in his life for him to be able to understand what God wanted. So, understand. He's got 300 men. 300 men. He's following a path of, of uh, 
knowing what God wants. And, and faith is beginning to rise, and he's beginning to get very, uh, I don't want to say proud, but he's getting very uh, confident in that, in that God is going to do this through him. Okay? So, it says here, The Lord said to Gideon, With these 300 men who lapped to drink, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. All the rest of the people should go home. Verse 8. So the 300 men took provisions and ram's horns, trumpets in their hands. Gideon sent all, sent all the other Israelite men to their tents. And, but, he, but he kept the 300 men. Now, here's where it gets exciting. Okay? What happens after this point is what is exciting to me. Now, the Midianite camp was below him. This is verse, still verse, uh, I believe it's verse 9. Yes. Now the, now the Midian camp was below him in the valley. Verse 9, the night, of, the night the Lord said to him, Get up, that night the Lord said to him, Get up and go down into the camp, for I have given it into your hands. Yet if you are afraid to go down, then go down to the camp with Pura, your servant. He doesn't want it to go down. He, he, he's saying, if you're afraid, if you're still afraid, go down with Pura, your servant. This is exciting. This is an exciting story. Now, he says to him, go down, and he says, listen to what they say, and afterward you will be emboldened to go down to the camp. So he and Pura, his servant, went down near the edge of the camp. Now the Midianites, the Malachites, and the, the Ketamites covered the valley like locusts, and their camels could not be counted, for they were they're as numerous as grains of sand in the seashore. So hundreds of thousands of people Hundreds of thousands of people and 300 men. Gideon had 300 men. These other people had hundreds of thousands of people. They were going to come against Israel and eradicate them. Okay? He said, take your 300 men and go. So he's telling them, go down near the, near the camp. He says, Gideon came down and overheard one man who was telling his dream to another. The man said, Listen to a dream I had. I saw a dry cake of barley bread rolling into the Midianite camp. It rolled up to a tent and struck it. It fell, turned upside down, and collapsed. The other man responded, This is none other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash the Israelite. God has given Midian into the whole, given Midian and the whole camp into his hands. So God had already been doing something. In the, in the Midianite camp down there, the hundreds of thousands of men were, be, were starting to be racked with fear. Be racked with fear. And it's interesting here to see what happens. But we won't see that today. <laughs> we won't see that in this video. If you know the story, you know the story. But we won't see that in this video. We will see that in the next video. So, until next time, read ahead if you want to. Get into our Judges chapter 7. Read ahead if you want to. We're going to cover it anyway. So until next time, it's Pastor Josh. God bless. <laughs>